What's up guys, Gary here with JMVFX. Welcome to this uh, brand new tutorial, uh, a little one by one really. Uh, but it's, um, you might notice the splash screen has changed to Blender 3.2. Oh yes, outside of beta, proper. I'm happy to use it. I'm happy to show people how to use things in it. Uh, so from this point on, everything will be in 3.2, uh, which is cool. And it does something which I love, which is this, basically the subject of this particular one by one. I'm gonna get straight into this. Um, this is a model that I built a while ago. Uh, it was a speed build of this car. It is out there. Uh, if you just look through my one by one tutorials, it won't be in that one. It will be in the all GenVFX tutorials list, or you can just look at my videos and you'll, you'll see it because it kind of looks like this. There you go. Um, I have got here uh, a little shiny floor and my little vehicle there resting on it. And you can see that's actually reflecting some area lights, which are also in this environmental scene. I'm very quickly just gonna go and change something in here. I'm just gonna turn on filmic and turn, go into film, sorry, and turn on a transparent. So we haven't got that blackness. We've actually got a transparent work area, which is good, especially if you're doing compositing, which we will be doing a little bit of in a little while. And uh, right here, right now, what we've got, as I say, is these lights. Now, in Blender 3.2, we have something called light groups. And these are actually really, really special because what it allows us to do is render passes of our object and its scene and everything in it using one light at a time. It'll still render a combined image, but it'll also do as passes of each light lighting the object or multiple lights in a group lighting the object. But making more sense would be if you've got three lights in the scene or 20 lights in the scene and you might want to just like change the color of stuff or change the color of the light or maybe wind it all the way back so it's not in there. You've got the control to do that in post. So you do each one in a light group. So basically what I'm going to do right now is I've got three lights. I've got, and they're all area lights actually. So let's call that area and let's call this one area. So it's already, there you go, augment with a little number. And if I press zero here, you can see on the number pad, this is our render view. So what we've got to do is I am going to very quickly go down here into our AOVs, all the all the things we can spit out, like diffuse and glossy and transmission, all of those, and the crypto, of course. And we've got shader AOVs, which is where we can plug a texture and say render all of the scene with this texture on it. Nice stuff, really clever. And now we've got this thing called light groups. Now I've got three lights. I've got a top light, a rim light, and I've got a front light. So I'm going to basically... I'm going to create a light group and I'm going to call it front light. I'm going to click on this, create another one, and I'm going to call it top light. I'm going to click another one and I'm going to call this rim light. Now they're created there. They now exist in that scene. So what we can do now is we can go to each light in question and let's just do this. I'm just going to go into the shading uh, tree, shading tab, sorry. And I'm going to pick, I've got that top light there. So I'm going to go to the object properties and you'll notice it's already open, popped open. I, well, it shouldn't be, it'll be like that normally. Uh, obviously I've been playing around. Um, you pop open that shade anything, you can see that light group. Well, I want that to be the only light in a light group in the top one. So I'll click on here and you can see the ones we just created. I'm going to put in that into top light. I'm going to pick this one here and I'm going to put this, I mean, I can put it into top light, it just means they're both rendered together, but I'm going to put that into rim light because that essentially is our rim light. If I just put this on the render view, you can see that's our rim light. It's giving us this light here. And then if I pick this light here, again, no light group yet, but that is our front light. So let's change that into front light. There you go. I can see all of those. I'm going to very quickly go and change my render settings to make it a little bit better. The threshold on this is particularly low, i.e. it's a high number, which means it'll be rubbish. Um, the maximum is set to 16. I'm going to set this to 512. I'm not going to denoise. Let's set that to 1024. Shouldn't take too long. And um, I'm going to render a frame. So I'm going to go into the compositing menu to do this. I'm just going to go here. I'm just going to press F12. So this changes to image view and it'll start rendering it through. And I say the samples, it's got 1024 to do. It's going to quickly go through them and start to really clean up this little nice little render. But as I say, it's not going to denoise it. Um, because sometimes like, it takes longer on this one, on this machine. But for a quick render, I mean, what was that? That was 15 seconds. I'm not going to complain. 15 seconds for a frame. That quality, I mean, I'd happy. I'd be happy with 45 seconds, I think. I would probably really clean up. Um, but hey, I'm, I'm going on again. But as you can see here, it is, and it's lovely. But 
uh, I don't want to see the combined thing. I want to show these light layers. So I'm going to change this to the compositor. And you can see here, we've already, uh, if, I, if I've already clicked use nodes. So this has come into view. Let me just very quickly change this to an image editor because it makes life a little bit easier if I do it this way. And if I zoom in here, you can see we have the image and the alpha, which we always get. And then here we've got combined front light, combined top light and combined rim light. So it's saying this is the combined view for the whole scene. And this is just the front lights pass. And we can show you this quite simply. Let's change this bottom one to the viewer node. As a lot of people know, I quite like doing it this way. Uh, let's pop that away. Uh, and I'm going to add in here an output viewer like this, like this. And the bottom one goes to view. And if I click on this here, I can turn off that in the backdrop here. I'm going to press shift and I'm going to go right mouse button over that line to create a little... I want to call it a grommet, but it's not. It's like just a break. So I can put the same image in here as it is going into there. And now you can see quite blatantly, the, first of all, the transparency uh, around our 3D car render. So what I'm going to do is I would like to be able to pop these together. So I'm going to very quickly just show you what I mean. That's our front light. Here we go. Let's look at the top light. There it is and the rim light that that is. Now there is a way to lay these up and alpha over isn't going to do it, unfortunately. Um, but alpha over is basically your standard A over B. So if I was to put the rim light in B and put that in A and shove that into there, you'll I'll put that into the middle and then you'll see them both. But you're only seeing half of each because each one of those is basically using half of its strength. That's not what we want. Let's just get rid of that. Let's put the image back into there for now so you can see how the difference as it pops. Can I get the alpha or get rid of it? I'm going to add into this a color mix because I can control it a little bit better here. I'm going to change this to additive and I'm going to take the front light, stick that in that one. I'm going to rim light and stick that in that one. I'm going to stick that into there and you can see basically I have got, if I just bring this down, I've now I can fade out the front light which is the one that's going to the bottom. So that's A and that's B, I suppose, is the way to look. or maybe that's A and that's B. That's A and that's B. Anyway, so I'm now, I can control that. I can fade that one in and out like that. And I'm going to add another one. So we go color, mix, and I'm going to put the top light into the top. I'm going to put that into there. I'm going to put that into there. I've changed that from mix to additive. And now I've got all my lights in there and now I can fade out the top light. I can also do that over here. So that's all fine if you want to control those two. I'm just going to press G and move that along a bit. There we go. But say I wanted to change the color of a light or make some alteration to it, like its strength. It's probably better if I don't do it there, but actually do it. I'm just going to let's just swap these. Let's just swap these lines over there we go in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this it doesn't really matter on the order because they're all additive but it just means it's a bit cleaner there you go so that's our rim and that's our that's our that's our top light so what i'm going to do so i'm just going to go into here i'm going to go to color and i'm going to go exposure and shove that into here so the rim light so i can bring down the rim light here like this so I can top it up. But what I can also do, you see, is I can go higher than one because it's a lovely linear image and it's got all this lovely color information in it. So you have got all this control, which means that you can say, you can, even if you wanted to, if you had just one image that you'd rendered and you brought that in rather than using the render layers, you could then have that over as many frames as you wanted. And then you can animate just the lights coming on. Simple enough. Be minus 10 on one keyframe. Um, and then you'd basically go forward a couple of frames, set it to say uh, two, or maybe just 1.25 or something like that, and then go forward another frame and keyframe it to one. So you've got like a sort of a little light jump, um, and then you have chum, 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 and you can turn all the lights on one after another. That is just the power. I mean, the power of this is is actually really, really quite something. Um, so if I take this top light one and let's go into here and let's go exposure, shove that in there and say, I want more light coming from that top light. So I can put a bit more of that in, that's quite lovely. And then again, with this, uh, the front light, I wanna bring that one down. So let's go color, exposure, and bring this one down 
So all of the light now is really concentrated more on the top of the rim. And I say, well, you know, that's fine. The rim, rim light's fine, but I want to change the color of that rim light. So what we can do is we're going to color. We can either straightforward change that color completely, utterly completely, or we can go in here and we can say, put some RGB curves in here, which is the way that I can to do this sort of stuff and say, right, I want to reduce some of the red. So maybe a little bit too much reduction of the red. And then let's reduce the green so we're getting more blue. And oh, we're going the green is now gone lower than the red. So if we bring down the red a bit more, so we're just getting something a bit bluer. There you go, like that. And then if you say, right, well, let's just lift it up there a little bit at the top. Let's bring it down a bit at the bottom. So you're getting the darker shades, you're getting rid of those, but the top shades, the little high high top ones, you're still getting those in. And then maybe what you could do is then say, add a slight blur to this and layer that over the top again so i can take just this element just this rgb curve and i can layer it atop of this one more time so let's move that out of the way. let's move all of those out of the way there and i want to add this back onto this so let's go add and let's go another color mix so let's go there it's got mix let's drop that there oh is that right yeah that looks okay and then i'm going to take this i'm going to put that there so that's now there but it's not mixed we need an additive so there it's over the top and then what i'm going to do here is because we've got this here i'm going to soften this I'm going to blur this and then i'll add another exposure on the top so let's go add filter we'll go blur pop that on there uh, variable source and we'll just scale this up here, and here so if i set that to 100 100 as it does its maths it's going oh i can't cope a bit big maybe that's a little bit too big let's just try 10 and 10 then see what happens there you go that's that's uh, a little bit let's just make that 30 and 30 there we go that's a little bit better so that's over the top it's not affecting anything else and then if we just very quickly go into here color go exposure and then bring this down a little bit You know, that's and it's you know, if we wanted to, we can actually just take the uh, rim light itself and shove that in so we're avoiding that color and then add it like it's a white glow over the top of everything, and then we could take that up a bit more. So, there you go, see how bonkers that is. Uh, let's go set that to uh, what was it? Zero is basically how it starts, so let's set that to uh, minus two. There we go, even a little bit more, I think, minus three. There we go. So we're adding a little bit of glow back on the top and you know we can just um, mess around with it as much as we like but if you compare this as it stands right now to how it was originally if i just drop this in here there you go that was your image out of the gun but now you've got the control to do all sorts of things with the lighting as you want so basically that's it that's light groups i mean it's not a big one but i tell you what it's a fantastic one um as I said, you could render off a really good quality image, do a very small scale on it. So like, and have like a corridor and loads of little lights. And you could go ching, 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 and turn the lights on. And you only got to render one image and do the whole thing with the transform. So it's like a little sort of like zoom rather than actually like a track in. Or you could do it on a track in on a long move. Listen, um, as I said, this is just the beginning of the stuff in 3.2. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, some of it is very much kind of like under the hoodie kind of stuff, but this is one of the things which actually for me makes this even more accessible as a VFX piece of software. Um, listen guys, like and subscribe, please. A likes are wonderful, subscribe is also great. If you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, just you know, do that and tell your friends. And if there's anything you want me to do, let me know down in the comments. Okay guys, take care, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one, bye.